Hello, everyone. I'm Faith, and this is the Vita English Podcast. Welcome to the Vita English Podcast. You're listening to Language Stories. Language Stories is a series where listeners learn specific English skills through simple personal stories. In each episode, I'll focus on a different part of language as I tell my story. This podcast is for people who have a basic understanding of English, but want to improve their fluency. Today, we're going to learn all about how to use simple future tense with will and going to, as I tell you about my future plans for Vita English. If you've listened to my previous podcasts on simple present tense and simple past tense, you already know a bit about how I became an English language teacher. Today, I'm going to tell you about what my future teaching plans are. But to talk about the future, we need to go back to the past. Let's go back to 2018. In 2018, I made a major change in my career. I decided to leave in-person classrooms and to start teaching English online. I got hired by an online English school and I started teaching one-on-one classes and group classes online. And I loved it. I loved it so much that I thought to myself, someday, I will start my own online teaching program. And that's where I am today. In January of 2022, I started a company called Vita English. I'm just beginning now, but here are some of the plans I have for my company. I'm going to offer one-on-one classes on Zoom. I think practicing speaking the language you are learning is one of the most important ways to improve your fluency. So a big part of Vita English is online classes. I'm going to post videos on YouTube that will help my students communicate in English. I'm going to make videos on topics like if conditionals, comparatives and superlatives, passive voice, idioms, phrasal verbs, and suggestions I get from my viewers. I'm going to post weekly episodes of the Vita English podcast. I'll explain the grammar and vocabulary I use as I talk about different topics. It's really hard for English language learners to jump into an English language podcast without the support of having someone to slow down and explain some of the language, grammar, and vocabulary. So my podcast is going to be at a slower pace and it's going to have lots of explanations. I'm really excited to start this journey and I'm hoping to connect with students all over the world. Live online classes are really gaining momentum and I think they will continue to grow in popularity in the future. So, do you need someone to help you improve your English? I'll help you. I promise I will always correct mistakes in a gentle and clear way. Anyway, I think I'll end it there. I heard it's going to rain today, so I want to get outside while the weather is still nice. In the story I just told, I used simple future tense with will and going to many times. Let's look at five different ways I used this verb tense. Number one, to talk about planned events or planned intentions. Example, I'm going to offer one-on-one classes on Zoom. I'm going to post videos on YouTube. In the two examples I just gave, I used going to because these are planned intentions. These aren't just things I'm predicting will happen or something I'm thinking of in the moment. These are my plans. 
I'm going to offer one-on-one classes. I'm going to post YouTube videos. I have thought about this and this is the plan I have for the future. So I use going to because it is a planned intention. Number two, to make predictions about the future. Example, live online classes are really gaining momentum and I think they will continue to grow in popularity in the future. So in the example I just gave, I'm using will to make a prediction. So during the pandemic, a lot of things went online, including classes. So online classes really gained popularity. And my prediction is they will continue to grow in popularity in the future. Now, I don't know this for sure. It's not 100%, but It's a prediction I'm making. So I use will to talk about the future. Number three, to make promises, offers, or threats. Example, so do you need someone to help you improve your English? I'll help you. I promise I will always correct mistakes in a gentle and clear way. So in the first example, when I said, I'll help you, I'm making an offer. I'm offering to help, so I use will. I don't say, I'm going to help you. That sounds like you don't have a choice, like it's my plan. But when I say, I'll help you, I will help you, I'm making an offer. We also use will to make promises. And in the example I gave, I said, I promise I will always correct mistakes in a gentle and clear way. So this is a promise I'm making. I use the word will. Now, I didn't have an example from my story of a threat, which is probably good, but we also use the word will when we make threats. For example, if a child is playing with a toy and it's making a lot of noise, you might say something like, if you don't stop making so much noise, I'll take away that toy. When we're making offers, making promises, or making threats, we use the word will. Number four, to make a spontaneous decision at the time of speaking. Example, anyway, I think I'll end it there. So in this example, what I was trying to get across was in that moment, I just decided I'm going to wrap things up. When we make a decision in the moment, at the time we're speaking, we use I will, which often is reduced to I'll. So um, just bear with me. I'm going to share another example. Imagine you are at a restaurant and you've looked through the menu and you have decided 100% you are getting a cheeseburger. That is your decision. That is your intention. Now, You haven't thought about what you want to drink. So when the server comes over and asks you, what can I get you? You say, I'm going to get the cheeseburger. Going to, it's your intention. That's fine. Then when the server asks, and what would you like to drink? Well, you haven't thought about that. So in the moment you're making a decision, imagine um, you're looking around you see that someone at the table is drinking Coke. So you just decide in the moment that that's what you'll get. You would say to the waiter, I'll, I'll get a Coke. And usually it, it kind of shows in your tone that you're just making the decision in the moment. So um, when you're making a decision, it's not a planned intention. It's something in the moment. You use I will and you reduce it to I'll. Number five. To make predictions about future events, usually when we have a reason for our predictions. Example, I heard it's going to rain today. I want to get outside while the weather is still nice. So in this example, I use going to because I have a reason to think that it's going to rain. I probably checked my phone and saw the forecast saw that it was 90% chance of rain or something like that. So when I'm making this prediction, it's not just a wild guess. 
I have a reason to think this. I have knowledge about this topic. So in this case, going to shows that I have a degree of certainty about what is about to happen. It's going to rain. All right, now it's your turn. I want to give you a chance to practice using simple future tense. Try to answer these five questions. Say your answers out loud. Remember to use simple future tense. Question number one. What are you going to do this weekend? Question number two. How do you think the world will be different in the future? Question number three. Can you make a promise using will? Question number four. Imagine you are at a restaurant. You think the cheeseburger looks great, so you're going to order it. When the server asks you what you would like to drink, you don't know. You look around and see someone drinking Coke. At that moment, you decide to order a Coke. What do you say to the server? Question number five. What's the weather going to be like where you live tomorrow? Thanks for tuning in to the Vita English Podcast. Tune in to the next episode of Language Stories to learn present progressive. See you next time.